now that's better. Okay. Okay, we've done it. Okay. So, hey again, everybody. <laughs> if you saw that horrible thing that just happened, we apologize. It never happened. You so, can't prove it. So now we're really going to go through what uh, everything's happening right now. Uh, we are going to be talking about all the books that are coming out on 6 13 18, which is tomorrow, June 13th. We're also going to be talking about all the events that are going to be happening at the end of the week, as well as all the new stuff that's going to be coming up. So there's a lot to talk about. There is. There's so much to say. <sighs> it's going to be insane. So let's, uh, let's just get to it. So my first thing I'm going to talk about is Thor. The new one is Jason Aaron's run, which is going to be awesome. So Mjolnir is gone, and now Thor just has a crap ton of hammers. And he's just going to start policing the universe, essentially, to make things better. With many uh, hammers. Yeah, he's, he's basically just going to be, um, you know, like, finding all these artifacts that have been gone from, um, what is it, uh, Asgard. And that's pretty much it. That's what he's doing. All right. Yeah, that's awesome. Are, uh, one of any, my... are any of the artifacts hammers? No. Uh, okay. I will say Mike Del Mundo does the art for the main story. There's a Christian Ware uh, art sto uh, story that's about King Thor in the future. It has a really amazing last page that you're just like, wait, what? So, very much enjoy. Enjoy. I'm into that. Uh, my first one this week is the Starboy presented by The Weeknd, which there's been kind of a, a trend of musicians making uh, comics lately, and this one was actually pretty good. This is uh, another you know, superhero origin story, mm. like, as as one does. Mm. But, you know, he's a poor little rich boy who becomes, he gets powers. Okay. And he's real mad about it because, mm. you know, his dad's dead or something. Okay. It was, it was actually startlingly good. Okay. I was, I was shocked. Well, and you pointed out that there was some cool things like in, yeah. in universe ads for things. Which is exciting and weird. Yeah. Awesome. My next one is one I've been really looking forward to. I love the writer, Gail Simone. Uh, this is Plastic Man number one. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with Plastic Man, I, there's a lot of history here. So his name's Eel O'Brien. He used to be a crook, and then he got doused with chemicals, as you do, on heists. And he turned into Plastic Man, and then he became a hero. Uh, now, unfortunately, Plastic Man is getting framed for murder. and it's, so It's because of his sordid past. A little bit. Probably. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, I really enjoyed it. Gail Simone kills it every time she writes a new book, so... Yeah, that's true. Uh, I've got the third issue of Analog today that's coming out tomorrow. Um, they're wrapping up some Nazi stuff. Okay. If you like getting, seeing Nazis get beat up or and or killed, this is a book for you. Sweet. Everybody, everybody gets hurt in these two books. So, uh, if you're not familiar with what Analog's about in the future, um, basically nothing is secure online, so now you just pay people to carry your secrets around physically for you. So papers, uh, yeah. other various types of... Documents. Documentation. Uh, yeah. they, they have, they have a, a surprising form of documentation in here. Everyone was shocked. Oh, goodness. I know everybody's really stoked about this because it has been a massively huge seller here, Mr. Miracle number nine. So after this, we only got like three more issues, but man, this is kind of prescient because it's about uh, two kingdoms having a uh, you know a little sit down talk, a little uh, yeah. Uh, not everybody's reasonable, both in real life and now. So yeah, that, that doesn't always go well. No, nah, and it's it's awesome book. If you guys aren't reading this, you're missing out. It's very fun and awesome, and yeah, I'm really happy that's happening. Uh, 19, I Hate Fairyland. Um, if you haven't read any of I Hate Fairyland, you really, really are missing out on this also. Scotty Young is doing a great job. And um, Gertrude is... She's... she's. Yeah, I haven't I'm read it. I'm so good on words. I'm really great with words. No, so she's in space, and she's going through um, sort of a Groundhog Day of her entire life here. And they have maybe found a way out of it, who knows? Okay. But she's going to have to do, again, literally everything that she doesn't want to do to get out. Okay. That's the whole story. Nice. Over and over. It's great. So, uh, my next one is Man of Steel number three, Brian Michael Bendis taking over Superman. And I, last week I told you, or two weeks ago, I was on vacation last week. Uh, I told you I was a little nervous about this series because I wasn't really sure what to expect, and it is awesome. Uh, there's this big bad right here, you can see. Uh, he 
basically went up to all the elders of the DC universe and says, Krypton's getting too big for its britches. We need to cut it, you know, nip it in the bud while we can. And everybody's like, no, no, we're not going to do that. Then Krypton, Krypton mysteriously explodes. What? And then Golly. Superman happens. And uh, this big bad, he's just kind of like, how do we... Uh, it's almost like I told you so. How did we, uh, you know... Well, like, he was just, you know, like... Now he's on the run, trying to, you know, escape retribution, but also trying to get Superman because he's the last Kryptonian. So, yeah, I'm a super huge fan of this. It's really good. Uh, Marvel 2-in-1 Annual. The thing in Infamous Iron Man is the, the team up in this one. And it was really, really cool. I... They hate each other, and that's always a fun dynamic. Yes. Especially when Doom keeps referring to himself as Doom and not I. I love that. Mm. Uh, there's also a special appearance from the the whole council of Reeds, mm. which is always wild for me. I, I'm i never going to be used to seeing that many of the same person in the same place. But this one was really, I thought it was really fun. You get a little bit more backstory on Doom and how he's getting to be the hero that he's sort of becoming. Nice. I will say, let's let's leave not some spoilers. Okay, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. There's other things in there, I swear. Okay, cool. Uh, my next one is, I was a little wondering about this one. It's uh, Hawkman number one. It's spinning out of the pages of DC Metal. Uh, so Carter Hall, you know, he's, he's had a heck of a time. Uh, I don't know if you read all of Metal, but like, uh, essentially he turned into a giant monster bird that was working the forge, making the dark multiverse like more prevalent in the regular multiverse yeah That's so fun carter hall is now just having more adventures now and having a little more fun time uh there's some really cool things that happen here like three-eyed giant gorillas with wings chasing them um underwater battles you know and birds don't work well underwater so i i enjoyed it actually uh artworks by brian hitch uh it's written by um robert venditti venditti uh so yeah i enjoyed it it was really awesome uh, Domino, number three, it's another Gail Simone book. If you enjoy the Deadpool movie, this is a good book to pick up. Um, it doesn't focus on Deadpool at all. In fact, he's not in it anywhere. Yeah. But uh, Domino was really, really great in the movie, and she's really, really great in the book, too. And Gail Simone is a great writer for that. Um, they took a lot from her writing for that movie. Uh, in the, this issue... Uh, Something terrible happened to her friends in the last issue. Mm. She's really angry about it, which is super fun. Nice. We also get to learn a little bit more about uh, her backstory in the place that she grew up, which was not great. Mm. <laughs> not a great place. A lot of people are also really stoked about this one. This is Venom number two. It's actually issue number 167, but it's issue two of this story arc written by our friend Donnie Cates and uh, drawn by Ryan Stegman. So the last issue kind of ended on a huge cliffhanger with uh, Eddie Brock getting kind of wounded. And this is just, it gets pretty interesting. It's letting out little nuggets of knowledge about what's happening and why the Venom, the symbiote itself, is actually scared for once. Uh, so it's getting into that, but it's also, you know, like, Brock ain't taking no guff from the guy who set him up on the last job that got him hurt so bad. So, I'm enjoying it. This is the first time I've actually been enjoying a Venom book, so let that be a testament for it. <laughs> uh, Wonder Woman 48, the Dark Gods, uh, are coming. Wonder Woman is not really there for that, though. Mm. In fact, she's not really here for most of this. This is, uh, focusing mostly on her brother, Jason. Um... I like that it focused on Jason. I thought it was pretty fun because it's sort of like a Wonder Woman origin without having to rehash Wonder Woman's origin again. Um, I think Jason's pretty cool. He does all the stuff that Wonder Woman does, but reacts to it a little bit differently. Uh, that was that was pretty fun. Nice. There's a special appearance from Justice League at some point. That's cool. I'm noticing nobody's talking to us. If anybody out there, you want to you know say hi at least? Hello. Don't like We're anybody. lonely. While I'm waiting, I'll also talk about this next <laughs> book, which is about 10 years in the making. This is the conclusion of oh Jonathan God. Hickman's and Dustin Weaver's Shield. It's really taken that long. Uh, I believe issues were coming out when I first started working here, way back in 2008. Back so, in the day. I could be wrong, but I think that's when it started. Uh, but it's finally, you know, finishing. I actually didn't read this because I kind of want it to be a surprise. I, uh, I have to dig up all my old issues read the story all the way back up and so then I can, you know, finish this. Uh, I'm really excited about it, though. Uh, yeah. 
This is one that I've been excited for for a little while. Uh, the Titans special. This is the new Titans. Again, I think. Mm. Um, they're rehashing that, but they're making another new team. It's uh, formed with the Justice League. They sort of have their permission, and it's going to be run by Dick Grayson. He's going around in this issue and gathering up everybody who's going to be in the team. Um, the, the whole team is not really on the cover at all, so I'm going to just leave it as a question mark. But it was a really cool team. I'm excited about it. All of the people that I thought were really cool are going to be there. Nice. My next one is Darth Vader number 17. If you have been following these videos, you know I'm a huge fan of this book, as well <laughs> Trevor's, Trevor's <laughs> loving it back there. Uh, so Darth Vader is on the planet Mon Cala, where Admiral Ackbar is from. So it's mostly a giant water planet, so there's a lot of uh, aquatic battles happening, and Darth Vader, I know I said this earlier, he ain't taking no guff either. And it's mean. I love this book because it's very mean-spirited. You finally get to see Darth Vader, you know, like, just be evil, you know? That's what we all came for. <laughs> so, like, side note, like, growing up, you know, when I was watching Star Wars and everything, you know, I only watched it, you know, the first Star Wars the first time, and then I watched Empire Strikes Back, and then you, like, once you hit Return of the Jedi, it is forever ruined that you're like, oh, he's the bad guy. Yeah, you know, that's like, it. You always know that there's going to be redemption for him, and that's why I like this book, because it shows that evil. Yeah, you know? He's, this is before he was redeemed. You Sometime before that redemption. You can never get it back, and that's why I liked it, so. Uh, so, my next one, I actually don't know the number on this one. 48! It's the Flash, 48! Um, they're gonna have a war. A Flash gonna, war. A Flash war. It's not like a Flash mob, it's a bunch of Flashes having a war. They're gonna fight. But when Flashes fight, you know, everybody gets punished, sort of. Okay. It, it always seems that way. With, like, Flashpoint and everything like that. This is not Flashpoint. Mm -hmm. I want to make that clear. This is not Flashpoint. But there's, uh... You know, Wally's just having a, a rough time. He's having a rough go of things again. Um, Rebirth has not necessarily been kind to him. Yeah. But it did, you know, also least, bring him back. At least he's back, but it's not been kind. So, this is hard to describe. Uh... <laughs> I really like the artwork in it, but I'm going to have to like pour over this a little bit more. This is called Proxima Centauri by Feral Dalrymple. Uh, it's really psychedelic, it's very spacey, and it's also an adventure book, but I kind of don't know what's happening in it. And that, and I like that. You know, I don't like it when it's always just, you know, hey, here, here's the story, you got it. Like, this one's a thinker. And, you know, I need more of those in my, in my life. So this one I'm actually going to like sit down tonight really read it and, you know, try and figure out what's happening here, because I like confusing stories sometimes. You like a lot of confusing stories. I do, but, like, this, like, the artwork's gorgeous in it. I mean, like, just, like, this, you know, this is such a good spread right there, and he even has, like, little funny little jokes, like, Shaky Zeke, the space wizard. I mean, come on, that's great. So, yeah, not for kids at all, but you should definitely pick this up. Uh, speaking of thinkers, uh, the prelude to the wedding, Batman, uh, Batgirl and Riddler, um, approximately what you would expect, expect from a one-shot with the Riddler, there are a lot of riddles, and she goes around saving people from the yeah. effects of those riddles, because nothing can ever be simple when Edward Nigma is involved. Yeah. Um, and it didn't seem to have a lot to do with the wedding. Okay. But I thought it was a fun story. Uh, Batgirl going around and being a genius, which is exactly what I want from Barbara Gordon. Hmm. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and I really like that the Riddler is, like, menacing now. Yeah, he's actually a bad, bad guy. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so here's another really crazy book that's coming out that I'm also very excited about. Uh, if you, uh, this is, and I, I very much apologize if I mispronounce it, Michelle Fief? Fife? Fief? I, I always say Michelle Fief because I think it's French. Uh, Bloodstrike? Brutalists. This is for every 90s fan out there that likes imaged <laughs> comics from the 90s. I mean, almost everybody shows up. There's Young Blood. There's Bloodstrike. There's like, it's it's basically just setting up for the actual series. This is issue zero. It has that classic Michelle Fief like artwork that is just awesome. Uh, I'm a huge fan of his other books like um, Copra. Sorry, took me a second there because I'm a little tired. Yeah, so it's great. 
It's awesome. This is another one that I kind of like didn't read all of because I really want to pour over this later on tonight. I don't, I, you know, reading all these now, it doesn't mean I, it means I don't get to fully enjoy them later on tonight. So that's what I'm saving this one for. Full of pouches in that one. Yeah. It's pouches everywhere. Uh, and speaking of pouch, Saul says, The Pouch! The Pouch! Which there actually is, they are making a book called The Pouch. Uh, really? Yeah, uh, Rob Liefeld is jumping into it. I saw this of on, course he is. on a uh, comic book resources website where it's just like, yeah, The Pouch, and he's a character that's just made of pouches. I mean, that's reasonable, which, especially for Rob Liefeld. Which I'm really stoked about, actually. If it's real. If it's real, I'm going to be very happy. All right, so the next one I have is uh, Stellar, number one. Uh, we've got Space Girl Adventures. Um, she doesn't seem to have any powers in the first part of it at least right now, but she's a space bounty hunter who has perhaps done something terrible. Mm. And we're getting glimpses of what that terrible thing is and how she's trying to redeem herself. I'm actually pretty excited about this one. I don't want to say too much about it either, but space adventures yes. and redemption arcs. Yes. That's what we're here for. Nice. This one, uh, I really didn't know what to think because I haven't really heard that much about it, which is kind of silly. Hello from Poland. Oh, hey Joel. Hey, Joel. How's it going? In Poland. What's it like in Poland? Is it cold? I, I think so. I don't know. No. I don't know. Well, I, they're, in the they're in the northern hemisphere, so it's their summer also. Yeah. yeah. So it's probably not cold. Yeah. But I bet it's pretty late. Yes. I imagine that it is extremely late. Thank you for staying up all night and watching it. We're at Austin Books Nights. <laughs> uh, so anyways, back to this. <laughs> Uh, this is the new one from Mark Millar called The Magic Order. Uh, it's also going to be a Netflix series because Mark Millar signed a huge deal. The best way I can describe this is think Harry Potter meets the mob. I'm really excited for this movie, yeah, actually. Yeah, it was, it was really good. It gets really dark very quickly. But, yeah, it's there's wizards out there, and they are a, like a crime syndicate. I'm so into that. It's pretty awesome. So I'm very uh, excited. I'm not going to spoil anything for you here, It's it's but, man, it's just like... There's some creepy moments, too, that I was just like, oh, no, I don't like that. He's just flipping through it, I just see drop blood, yeah, so, yeah. so that's a that's a good sign. If you're a big fan of Mark Millar, and also uh, Olivier Coppel, Coppel, I can't ever say his name, and I feel, like, horrible about that. So, it's awesome. Pick it up. Uh, so, Stellar is actually Blevins and Keating. Yeah. Um, I'm also really excited about it. Um, the art is really, really gorgeous. If you can see any of that stuff. They've got some cool weird yeah, aliens. Oh, can I just can I just do that? I don't know. It's really beautiful. Joel says that Poland sunrise is 3 a.m. and sundown is 10 p.m., which is cute. What? <laughs> I've always wanted to go to a place like that where it's like daytime all the time. What? Because they're like higher what? up on the poles. Yeah, my roommate's from Alaska and she's been complaining about the daylight. It's really strange for me. My next one is by Robert Kirkman and Lorenzo De Felici. This is Oblivion Song. Uh, I've told you guys about the series before. Basically, a portal opens up, 200,000 people from Philadelphia just fall into it, and now there's monsters. And so this series is kind of dealing with the PTSD of going to this other dimension where there's monsters, but also uh, the hero, he's just looking for his brother, Ed. Uh, Nathan is the hero in this. Uh, he's looking for his brother Ed, and he gets kidnapped by some people that have kind of been, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Nativized to the mm. uh, to the monster dimension. So that's not really good. dig it. I've uh, I used to live in Philly, so every once in a while I'll see something in background, and be like, oh hey, I worked next door to there. Yeah, pick it up. It's great. I think we're uneven now. No, keep going. Okay. 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 <laughs> By night, uh, if you like Giant Days, this is the uh, creator of Giant Days, and I can't remember what Christine Larson did. The artist is from something else that I'm interested in, but I can't remember right now, because I'm sleepy. But um, you have these two friends who were really, really close once upon a time, and one of them left, and it was very sad, and she's come back, and now they're going to go urban exploring, which is not super duper legal, and not extremely safe, and I think that it's gonna get supernatural, which is always exciting. Mm. Maybe in an asylum, which is not something you should go into, but it's really fun to watch other people go into them. I was broken into an asylum in San Marcos. That's what they're gonna do! It's terrifying. It's this exactly! Terrifying. Uh, my next one, uh, actually the writer of this, uh, he did Naked Bear Fighter. Uh, he actually came by the shop and did some, signed some uh, 
some uh, issues of naked bear fighters. Shirtless. So if you shirtless, I'm sorry. Well, he's naked. For he's first, naked like, for most of it, but the sorry, shirt is the only part that messes fighter. him up. Yeah. So this is Jody Leup, and this is the Weatherman. I had no idea what this is about, and this was really, really fun. Um, basically, it's the future. We all live on Mars. Something bad happened to Earth. Uh, As it does. Like a good 18 billion people are not alive anymore. And we're just trying to make it on Mars. And, you know, it's future, so we have, you know, little robots. We also have, you know, developed the Mars, you know, atmosphere for us. And this guy, he's just the weatherman there. And a lot of intrigue happens around him. That's all I'm going to say because there was a lot of twists and turns. And I was like, wait, what? Oh, oh wait. Okay. I'm yeah. so excited. Right. So, really love this book. It's great. Uh, if you've never read Kaiju Max... I, I encourage you to do so. It looks really cute, but it is actually extremely violent and kind of, like, urban political. It doesn't have anything to do with, like, politics, but a lot of, like, social issues. Mm -hmm. uh, the first three volumes all took place at a maximum security prison for kaiju monsters. Yep. This volume is going to take place at a maximum security prison for lady kaiju monsters. <laughs> So, oh, really? yeah, we've, we've moved to a female maximum security prison. Orange is the new monster. Orange is the new monster. Orange is the new kaiju. That was bad, um, I'm sorry. It was really wonderful, and I loved it. Uh, we've got some of the same characters. They've been transferred because they can't hack it at the man's prison. All right. <laughs> and it's really, really interesting. I've loved every single bit of this book. It's by Xander Cannon. If you like monsters... Um, it's just so sad. It's... Very, very sad. I could not sleep at all. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, so, you're correct. Uh, Stellar is written by Joseph Keating. My next one is <laughs> hard to describe, and I told you guys about every single issue, but now you can read it all at once. This is the DC Young Animal Crossover Milk Wars, which... If you haven't watched any of the videos, the best way I can describe it is they're psychic cows, and their milk basically rewrites reality. And then, uh, you know, so Superman becomes Milkman Man, and then, you know, Wonder Woman becomes Wonder Wife, and then Batman becomes Father Bruce. And that basically there's these... There's this office somewhere in the ether that is editing DC to make it more wholesome and friendly, and so all the young animal characters are showing up and be like, no, screw that, we're gonna keep it weird. <laughs> uh, that's the best way Bring I can describe it. It is pretty darn nuts. This is also where Eternity Girl comes from. If you are reading that Young Animal book at all, this is where she springs out of. Uh, I have Coda number two. Uh, if you read the first one of this, this is... It's beautiful. It is. And it's wild. Uh, the art in this is gorgeous. The colors go from just completely all over the place, and then the very next page... Uh, they kind of mute down completely, which is really fun. I have a lot of fun with books that play with colors a lot, so that was one of my favorite things about this. The story is also beautiful, um, but kind of horrifying. We're getting some some horror fantasy vibes out of this. Uh, there's... I don't know, it's just really exciting and cool and fantasy. Well, you said it's starting to turn into a Dark Howls the movie. Yeah, so. there was, a, there was a, an image that looked just very similar to Howl's Moving Castle. Um, so I kind of hope that it does turn into a dark Howl's Moving Castle. I want to see that, but with a broken world. Yeah. And, like, the whole point of the book is, you know, like, they're in this fantasy world where fantasy is dying. Like, magic is just dying. So it's, like, a limited resource now. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a really cool idea. Like, Simon Spurrier said, uh, I killed magic. Sorry. So I, thought I love Simon cool. Spurrier so he, he's much. He's really good. My next one is a series that I have that holds a special place in my heart, Rumble. Uh, this is volume four, but it's actually, you know, the beginning of the last series that just started. They do they're doing it like seasons essentially. Uh, in case you're not familiar with this, there is a warrior god that is also a scarecrow named Rathrak. And he just slices up monsters back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, in the last couple of uh, volumes, you know, he's a good guy and everything, but in this one, like, he's gotten way meaner, and you don't know why. Uh, it's pretty darn dark, but also hilarious. There's just some really fun stuff that happens in here. The artwork's very cartoony, but that, like, lends itself to, you know, when the disturbing things happen, you're just like, oh, whoa, hey, okay. So, yeah, really dig it. So, Drew, I will look that up as soon as this is over. Yeah, because if we open this here, it's yeah, just, it's, it's all over, man. Game over. 
Um, so this is the one that I've been probably the most excited about uh, coming out for some time now, Marvel Rising Alpha. If you if you hadn't noticed the tattoo already, I really, really love Miss Marvel, and she's gonna be in a book with Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, which is exactly who she should be in a book with as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Uh, back in school where Doreen is teaching, and there's a video game villain again, but it's a different kind. She's pulling video games out into the real world, which I'm very excited about. This is all ages, which Marvel, like, none of the none of the big two seem to put out very many all ages books. So I'm really excited for an all ages book that I can put in the hands of any kid and just say, look at these beautiful heroes. Let's go. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so hyped. My next one is from our friend Donnie again. This is Baby Teeth Volume 2. If you haven't been following this series, you are missing out because it is about a very adorable little antichrist and his family that is just trying to keep him alive even though he's the antichrist. And so there's all these little machinations, try, like, you know, some people are just trying to kill it. So, you know, the end of the world doesn't happen, but then there's, uh-oh, another, this cult that kind of, like, wants to nurture him and make sure these things happen. Twists and turns, left and right. I really dig the artwork in it. It's very scratchy and phonetic, frenetic, not phonetic. Uh, there's also a very adorable little, like, cat demon monster thing that it's I think is pretty fun. Very cute demon. Yeah, it's, this is probably, like, one of my favorite books by Aftershock right now because you just don't know which direction it's going to head. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. Uh, the hardcover of Grass Kings Volume 2 is out this week. I'm really excited about that because I really enjoyed Grass Kings. Um... Matt Kent wrote this one. The art is gorgeous. The writing's amazing. Um, they're sort of this secluded town there where no one is allowed to leave, so they don't... Or they Well, they can leave, they just don't want to, because they exist under their own rules. They follow... They police themselves. All right. So they don't like outsiders, but someone comes in and they're trying to protect her, and everything sort of breaks loose. It gets really bad. And I'm really excited about it all the time. So, I was telling you about Proxima and Centauri, where it's a really crazy sci-fi, you know, psychedelic epic in the starting. Well, Feral Delrymple <laughs> did another one, and this is finally collected. It's called It Will All Hurt. And this is a very psychedelic, crazy fantasy book, where it's about this girl right here, this little robot dude, little ghost boy here, and this bug, and they're just trying to have adventures in this very dark world. Once again, the artwork is very solid. You got pig people, you got talking cats, you got eyeballs exploding out of people's faces. I mean, what else do you want? Is it connected at all to the other book? Or I don't just believe so. I think this is just its own thing. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, so I have some manga now. Uh, Claudine, I'm really excited about. This is the, the reprint of a very old book from the 70s. If you're familiar with The Rose of Versailles, this is the same creator. Mm. And it's a... It's a trans narrative set in the 70s, so you know that you're getting ready for some good, good heartbreak. Okay. We're just on that heartbreak train. Um, All right. The art is gorgeous, as it always is from uh, Ryoko Ikeda. Um, it's not as uh, fantasy. It's not fantasy. What it was... It's a little more real life? Well, Rosa Versailles isn't necessarily fantasy, it's just a period piece. This is a, a later period, but it's still a period piece. So, like, 70s? No, it's not set in the 70s. Okay, I it's... don't know. <laughs> I haven't read it. But it's it's beautiful, and it's a lovely trans narrative, and it's also a romance, which is exciting. Does it, does it give you... Do you get the thumbs up on that? Thumbs up! There we go. It's beautiful. I'm really stoked about this, because... Hellboy is really hard to read sometimes, because there's <laughs> so much stuff. Uh, one thing that they're doing now is they're setting out the entire series chronologically. So these are this is the complete short stories, volume one of Hellboy. So check it. It starts when Hellboy's two years old, and it just goes through his age of just like two, three, four, five. So it starts in 1947, and then it just continues on to like uh, what was it? What does it say here? To 1961. So like if you've been reading that Hellboy 1960 series, that's you know part of this. Uh, it's gorgeous. It's awesome. You get to see a lot of different artist interpretations of everything. Mignola does some art in this as well, but you got to see, like, who else does some stuff in here? Um, I don't know any of the Hellboy artists besides Mignola. Man, they go they go through the gamut. Uh, let's see. We got Richard Corbin, 
Duncan Fogretto, Mick Mahan, uh, Mike Mignola, of course. So yeah, there's some really good stuff happening in this book. I told you you gotta hit it. Okay, well, you're just gonna get fine. All right, well, the next one I have is Mushroom Girls in Love. Um, I'm still on my manga. It's really cute. It's a little bit, I mean, it's really fantastical because it's an entire planet full of mushroom people and they are all women. Um, and okay. it follows a couple that fell in love and if you get married and you aren't compatible, you will rot away and die. So we're, we're hoping that they're cute and compatible. Um, I, I need to read more of it. I read the first, like, half, I think. But All right. they, they seem to be compatible so far, so fingers crossed that neither of them rots away and dies. It looks pretty bananas. Yeah, there's oh, a hey, lot. Oh, hey, cool, giant spider monster. Yeah, there's a giant spider monster. Great. That's not terrifying. Okay, now you do your last one, then I'll just do my last one. Uh, my last one is another one I'm very excited about. A quick and easy guide to they, them pronouns, which I have every intention of giving to every person in my life, because that's my pronouns. Uh, pronouns are really important to me, so I'm excited to... Uh, share this with people that may not understand why they're important or may not understand how they work or like Just don't or are just really excited about their own pronouns mm. Maybe they just are excited like me and want to see how other people interpret things hmm. that's, How much is that book? It is $7.99 See it's that's a nice way to make your friends comfortable and also expand your mind a little yeah. bit Yeah, and you could give it as a gift if you have people who are like I don't really understand but I'd like to learn more and you can say Yes, I have this book for you. It's full of knowledge. Oh, nice. I'm also planning great that. For grammar nerds that need to be put in their place. Yes, great for grammar, grammar nerds. nerds that need to be put in their place. Thank yeah. you, George. Uh, my last one, as usual, is the sidekick special of the week. It is Marvel Man Classics Volume 1. If you know me, you know my favorite comic of all time is Miracle Man, and that couldn't happen without this. This was based uh, from actually 1950s. That's a long time. So during the 1950s, there was a kind of a wave of superheroes where they were kids, they said magic words, turn into superheroes kind of thing, and Marvel Man was a part of that. Uh, this is usually $34.99. We are doing it for $8. That's really good. Eight bones. First thing available, or available first thing. <laughs> hey, there you go. At uh, the Sidekick store tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. So, let's get through every single thing we gotta talk about really quick. Uh, we have... The first thing coming up... The first thing? Go for is it. Is Ladies Night. Ladies Game Night. Yeah. On Thursday... From 6.30 to 9.30 over at Outlaw Moon. Uh, you'll get to see Kaylee there. You'll get to see Sarah there. I won't be there, but I know that it'll be great because Ladies Game Night is always great. We have a good time. We sit and we hang out and we play games. You can bring snacks or you can have some snacks. Yeah. But it's always fun. Nice. What else do we got? Uh, the one after that, I think, is the Rainbow Jam. Yeah. Which is coming up next week uh, on the... 21st. Yep. The 21st is going to be the Rainbow Jam. Um, we don't have a speaker this time, so we can all just, like, talk. You can pick up a quick and easy guide to they, them pronouns, or Mushroom Girls in Love, or Claudine. I have all these things that I could give to you. We have... It's like you were leading up to something. Oh my god. It's wild that I would do that, of all people, really. Right. Um, so... I'm excited about that. Please come. Um, it's important to have a community, and I'm really excited about the Rainbow Jam because it's a community where we can talk about things that we're really into, because sometimes being a nerd and looking for a community is hard. Yeah. And it's good to support that community. And, you know, like, I am not in the LGBTQ, but I'm an ally, and I will be there as well. And that's really important, and we all, I think, should appreciate that. Yeah. We're adorable. <laughs> So that's usually 7 to 10, right? That's going to be 7 to 10, yeah. Yeah, we usually try to end it up at 10, but if we stay a little bit later, that's fine. Don't bug me. Not the end of the world. Yeah. Uh, we have some big things coming down the pike in about three weeks. I can tell you a couple of things. There's a lot of uh, big issues and events happening soon. Uh, I'm actually going to wait until next week to tell you most of them, but I will say on July 4th, we have confirmed with Donnie Cates he's going to come back for Cosmic Ghost Rider. I'm as well excited as, about that. I'm very excited about that. Uh, and also for Death of the Inhumans, which I'm also very excited about. He's going to be signing here from 4 to 8 that day. We're going to be doing some other stuff around that day, but I just want to get the details, you know, taken care of. And that is a Wednesday, just yeah. in case anyone was unsure about Wednesday. the date. It is July 4th. Uh... We want to patriotically sign comics. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I guess that'll do it for us. Uh, do you got any anything else? 
that's all I've got for now. Okay, cool. Well, you can follow me at SuperTideNintend1. You can follow you at... Dragonosaurus. You can follow both of us at Austin Books, and we'll see you tomorrow. And I'm going to go turn off the camera, so... Awesome. You get to sit I'm there awkwardly. dance, because I don't... I, I'm going to awkwardly dance. You are. <laughs>